sorry for being late or early or whatever you you might want to call it. Um, I had to to push this five hours earlier. Uh, I had some last minute travel upcoming and then I didn't want to leave my my flat like this. So I had to do some IKEA stuff. Uh, still lots of IKEA boxes uh, tossed around here. Um, no, you're not going to see that. I'm not going to turn the laptop around. Uh, bigger desk now, more space to that direction. So when I come back, I can rearrange better, which should make this whole setup easy, easier. Right now, I'm kind of cramped into this tiny little corner, and I want space to work on and have some notes and the extra graphics tablet and, and, and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm traveling. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to stream next week. I, I'm i even considering going naked. No, I'm going to wear clothes. Uh, it's hard to get through an airport without clothes on. Uh, talking about laptops, usually I carry around my, my ThinkPad and my MacBook Pro. Mighty heavy, and I won't have much time anyway. So let's see. But if I decide to carry one or even two laptops around, I might not have the bandwidth to do streaming on the go. So sorry about that. When I come back, I get my new MacBook. Yes, I went and ordered the 16 inch. Uh, this one here is, is, as I mentioned before, 2012, 13 inch, and, and it's getting kind of a bit, no, actually it's not getting slow, but I need a reason to buy the new one, so. But that means better streaming, less hassle with setup and capturing cards. And shall we dive in? Everybody here? Shall I? Shall I do the do the magic? Uh, check why I can't see my own stream thing? Yeah, let's do that. My channel should be live now. Preview. Yeah. Wow, that was easy. So, quick one today, I aim for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, uh, just to keep the rhythm going, and um, yeah, let's see. So where did we leave off last time? Uh, we fixed the render order for, for the overlays, and, and as you can see, there's no more high scores here, so let's move this down. And I really practiced to use the correct keyboard. No, I didn't, but I mentally prepared myself to keep that in mind. And then we said we talk about the debug render a bit because we stumbled stumbled across that quite a, quite a few times. And then another thing which we might not get into, but we realized last time, and I really want the update in the store, and I want it in the store before I get jump on the plane. So. As we said, all the screenshots kind of look nice, and then we, we had this this title screenshot here. And remember that's using the zoom to fit the screen, and, and it's kind of, I, I could push it to the store like this, but do I really want to? Do I really, really, really want to? That's, I'm not happy with that, so let's let's spend some time uh, some time into looking into iPhone 11 Pro Max title screen zoom. Um, could be simple, could be hard, could be anything, but we'll, we'll talk about this, this when we get there. Um, side note, I still haven't updated Fastlane. Um, I want my stuff to be working before I update. I, I don't want to have two moving targets chasing each other, so I decided to freeze Fastlane till I did the upload to Apple and, and then update Fastlane. And I've been chasing my tail for four weeks now, and I want that update in the store. So let's aim to do that. So debug render. Debug render. I, I need to get rid of that fish. It's super cute, but it's so cute. It's distracting me, but, but maybe I can just not look at it. Oh, transparent arm. Nice. Um, so, 
focus. Debug render. So we talked a lot about rendering last week and, and sometimes you just need to see what's going on. And we stumbled all across this here and say, if, if you're not doing wrong keyboard, freaking wrong keyboard mapping, I need to stop pressing Visual Studio keys on my MacBook. So better if dev this so we don't accidentally have this in a release build. And, and let me show you real quick what it's doing. And we're just going to do a full debug build for this. There, the key caster is working again, so you should be able to follow along and see what keys I'm pressing. Build succeeded, let's run it. <coughs> yeah. Do you hear that noise from the street or is it okay? No, I think my mic is canceling that out. And again, I ran fast lane, so it messed up the simulator. So I just do the rotate dance, just just wiggle it until the gyro, you know. And and now you can see the debug renderer, which which shows us a few interesting things. I mean, we have the buttons up here, which are not rendered, but the elements are there. So the UI system renders the boxes and stuff, so you can see there's a dialogue in the middle here. Here's a score boxes with a text. Here's a debug menu. It actually puts a cross in the middle of the screen and a cross at the very top and the very bottom that it's... When developing the auto screen sizing, sizing code, this was super important because, as you know, all the devices, different aspect ratios and doing numbers in your head. And so we use a little trick here. Every screen has a size of 1024. And, and just the final render scales it and, and we ensure that the right has enough, enough overscan. So whatever screen we actually use is big enough. And and when we go into the iPhone 11 Pro Max situation, we, we talk about that a bit more. Um, let's open the debug menu. So as you can see here, um, all the boxes are are there. And, and actually, this was a font rendering test to test the font alignment. So I have right alignment, center alignment, left alignment. And actually, we also have vertical alignment. Um, the, the little red cross is the last click because also when we were doing the aspect ratio and the fish is swimming because I clicked, uh, when we were doing the aspect ratio thingy, um, the mouse clicks need to be translated to the virtual system too. So let's turn off this debug screen real quick and look at this. So the debug renderer is on and that also means the, the physics engine game renderer, excuse me, Mmm, cold coffee. So the debug renderer, the, the physics engine also has debug rendering. So let's let's continue playing. And that basically renders what the game is playing. And as you can see, let me stop right here. So first thing you see, and it might be a bit small, but I'm not going to zoom in right now. So, oh, maybe I will. Maybe I. No, I won't. I won't. I'll 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 prep that for. Where's my? Need to lock it so I don't <coughs> accidentally move it. Okay. Sorry, winter is coming. I'm getting a cold. I actually was out with a fever for a day, but it, it's back. So as you can see here, there's the fish layout and, and it's not animated. It's just hard coded. Um, 
few few polylines and and same for the for the rocks and the objects actually don't have a dis collision box at all they just have have center center point distance so as you can see the fish actually overlaps outside the physical uh, the the fish model the physics system uses but you can see it's all way well almost if you go up it kind of swims down but it's almost to the advantage of the of the player so if the little tail hits the the rock down here i'm not gonna I'm gonna do that precisely but a collision will appear and let me just check if this debug button is working No, it isn't. Cause we oh, this is this is a screenshot button, and yeah, we disabled all the the other buttons. Um, the fish UI. We had a mode where you could move the fish with with touching the screen or dragging it around, which was super cool for debugging the physics engine, cause you could just see okay, one more pixel, one more pixel, okay, that's it, collision done, and um. Yeah, this is a debug render. Let me check one thing real quick. Because actually I saw it. Yeah. So the debug menu can toggle the debug renderer. If you see in the background for the for the game, which is super helpful. I'm not sure what this button does. Oh, this, this toggles the debug renderer for the UI. And this for the... These buttons really should have text on them. But... Yeah, let's let's leave them both on, hide the debug, and maybe go into the options menu. So here you can see there's there's a shop button here. That's the one that was never enabled, and it kind of looks funky because the plank is there for the button, but there's no button there. There's a toggle music button, and I'm actually not capturing the music right now. Just to I can just turn that on for a minute. So you can see that you see nothing. Oh, my bad. So this is the music. And these are the sound effects. I'm turning this off. And, and as you can see, if you look closely, we we have no animations there. We just crossfade two textures. We can can look into that at some point. I think that's actually interesting and might be worth looking into the ui system ui system everybody has a ui system and then he has a new ui system and then you replace the ui system with a new ui system and then over the weekend somebody creates an even better ui system and yeah this this just works <coughs> good enough let's talk about ui system um toggle buttons. I think that's a good start. And maybe about I system layouting. Cause that that's also to do with uh, with uh so you see this buttons no matter what the device they are always in the corner. This is always in the corner and I don't do magic mass in the game to do it. I just say go to the corner. Actually that might not be true. So remember, this is four years old code, and I think we rewrote the UI system to do exactly this, and there might be some mass involved here. But I'm I'm totally getting off topic. Chat, please tell me when I'm totally going off topic. So, as you can see, wait, I'm playing the game, fading in the UI here, and we were, we were off topic focus what is our goal of the day and i usually put a sticky on my screen talk about the debug renderer so we can turn it on and off um which is nice and and then um, last time we we talked about the debug renderer a little bit and basically debug renderer the whole singleton discussion, you can have more than one debug renderer, and actually we do have more than one debug renderer. Remember the UI system debug renderer and the game debug renderer? This is exactly this. So so you can have one, two, fifty, I don't care. But since we wanted 
very easy to to access and use from all over the place. We have this pattern of the, the debug renderer doesn't know if he's the only one or if there are gazillions. Um, but there's always one default one that's global. And, and yeah, global's not good, but in this case, hey, you're 15 levels deep into your code and want to quickly debug something, just use this. And, and it will always be there. You can always use it. It might not be activated, so you're sending your data to Nirvana, but but in the end, um, yeah. So we have a maximum of 1,024 lines, just having maximums for easier management, memory management and stuff, and, and we're not actually managing memory. We just have, have this array here to, to manage it, and then we have the used lines here. This very very old school code probably 15 years old when standard template template library was an absolute no go for reasons i'm i'm not going to go into today so so this probably should just be a the vector to be honest <coughs> maybe a vector with some capping but and then yeah we initialize it, we put it on the stack, we initialize it, we can shut it down. So initialized means it's rendering something. Shut down means, well, I'm here, but I'm not ye really active. So everybody still knows where it is. Um, the usual next frame and, and render. Mm, there's no update. The debug renderer does no animations or stuff. It just renders the lines it got during this frame. So we since the next frame. We start with the next frame and everything between <coughs> the next frame call and the render call, any any line added will be rendered at the render call. And then add cross and add frame are just shortcuts for that. So let's jump here. Keyboard wasn't. So next frame just says, hey, we have no lines, done. Very, very straightforward. And, and the renderer actually, um, <coughs> Excuse me, I'm saying, so the renderer, the render actually gets a renderer because it needs to have some access to the hardware in the end. Early out, if I'm not initialized, well, I'm just in the off mode. Um, we have to set a texture, remember? Render effect, layer, texture, what we did last time, uh, just use texture zero to use a defined texture because we're not doing a texture. And then this probably should be refactored because basically it iterates over the lines, gets the line, and this is the line width. And basically what this does, all this, it does, a, a, it renders a quad to visualize the line because because a single pixel line would just be <coughs> very hard to see and actually our system can only render triangles yeah i know but that was a shortcut in the in the development of the renderer we only render triangles everything is a triangle and now you might say um let me yeah just anything. So, so you might say, okay, you can render a triangle. So to render a line, just just make a triangle where two points are at the same point. So it will look like a line. And yes, good idea. But most GPUs will just toss this line away because it has zero area. It realizes points are when two of the points in a triangle are the same, it's zero area, so not a single pixel will be filled, so this line just will be gone. So what we do here is a bit of mass to, to extend the line. So, so let's say we want to draw this line, and sorry for the funny chalk. So what we actually do is, and, and let's follow along the code here, we get the perpendicular vector, which is uh, a nice way of saying the normal. So 
depending on wh which end you start, let's say this is the normal we got, then we normalize it because we want to be unit length. So, and, and that's why this is saying perpendicular because sometimes you don't need the normalization and that's a division in a square root and isn't as expensive anymore as it used to be, but it used to be expensive. So sometimes you just want the perpendicular. So this is a performance optimization and then we normalize it. So we have a defined length vector here. That is length one. Sorry for smudging. I really need to hook up my tablet. And then we just copy the start and end and have S zero and S one start zero and end zero and then we just um, add scaled basically does, says okay you have this vector take this vector multiply it by this and add it to this so we have minus the lengths here so s0 at ease let, let's just look at s0 so basically what it does we have the normal we multiply it by the line width so if this is the start, we have this point. And if this is the end, we have this point. And I think you can get what this is going at. And then we add these two vertices. And then we go to the to the line end and basically basically do the same for one of them. So so we add this point here. So, excuse my handwriting, this is zero, this is one, this is two. Actually, we did this. And then we add three, which is basically this. This is three. Drawing with a trackpad here, so excuse me. And then, uh, so this is a three, and then um, there's a special case. We could have probably done this much earlier, but this is saying, hey, if you draw a line, that's just a point. Don't bother. Um, <coughs> and here we render two triangles. So we this renders a zero, one, two triangle, and this renders a zero, two, three. So we render the let me the zero. Mm, I wanted the different color here. So we render the zero, one, two triangle. And then we render the zero, two, three triangle. So the zero, two, three triangle. And all what this did is uh, give some widths to the lines. Basically make a quad that extends over the line and and there's a few problems with this, but for the debug renderer, it's good enough. You want to know about the problems? Okay, Let, let's let's talk about the problems. So this is all fine for single line, but for example, for the fish, you have the little fish tail, so you have a debug line like this, and then you have a debug line like this, and then you have a debug line by this, and I'm not going to draw the full fish here because it's just going to get noisy so let's well I'm going to draw the full fish here oh an artist died with me with me but let's focus on the first two lines here so we have this line and then this line and again for debug rendering it's okay and then we do our magic um, extend along the normals for the first triangle so we get ignore that the ends don't match, but it's so hard to draw with this trackpad. So we get this line all cool and fine. And then we do the normal extension here and you've already seen this. So we do the normal extension here and then we draw our quad made of two triangles again. So we get this. And we get this, and now you see the problem. So, one problem is here. We get this area here. 
you see there's overlap here and and then we get uh, another problem which is here oops drawing with the trackpad I, I need the space for my tablet so this area here is kind of empty there's something missing here so if this was something visible to a user you wouldn't do it like this you would do it partially like this there's, there's an easy solution basically if you have a polyline you you calculate these points you calculate these and then you you <coughs> do some math to kind of average this out so put one here put one here or you can do rounded caps or there are multiple ways to do this but, but for the debug renderer and I wish I could zoom in but there's no zoom for the debug renderer here it's 90% are right angles anyway which have the overlap and you can see a little bit you can see probably one pixel here. Excuse. Not sure if the compression will kill it, but you can see one pixel here, which basically is is kind kind of this case due to the rounding errors. But mostly, it's it's you could see it at the edges of the fish and the edges here. But we don't care. It's for visualizing for debugging. Hey, is my button centered correctly? Is my fish in the right place? Uh, did I accidentally load the load the texture the the collision polygon for the corals for one of the rocks or is the fish using the spaceship collision box so for that it, it's more than good enough and and actually if you look really closely you can see this purple lines here uh it's it's really not we do an extra session about this but that's the bounding boxes, bounding rectangles for the collision, because we're not doing line-line collisions, we're doing rectangle, rectangle collisions, and when the rectangles overlap, then we do a line-line, polyline, polyline collision. Just performance again, in this case, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five objects on the screen, and we only have to test one of them, the fish against all the others, because we don't care if the rocks collide or overlap like here, so that's trivial. and. <coughs> Sorry about that cough. It's it's not really getting better, and, and I'm considering cutting this even shorter than planned today. Um, let's see. But you're here, I am here. And so debug render. So debug render renders a bunch of lines, and if I look here, basically everything from here. This should probably be completely factored into a render line with width width render line with width 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 well if i say it 15 times it's going to get worse but but this is what it does or maybe we should at least add a comment here but good enough so navigate <laughs> jump back Oh, I don't care, I just go to the other. And then we have to add cross and add frame here. Oh, and and as you can see, we have colors here. Did, did, we, did we check the colors? So when we're adding the line, we, we also add this four color components so for debugging to have different different kinds of colors. And then when we, when we render them, um, we just tell the renderer, hey, from ev for everything from now on, and it's it's very state based. It was based on old OpenGL standards. From now on, use this color for everything that's colored. So, so use this line color for our for our two triangles down here. So, add cross. You saw the little crosses. Um, this cross here or the the last mouse press <coughs> cross
cross, yeah, every caller could just say, okay, I know how to do a cross, but really? So add cross is basically, hey, I have a position, I have a size, I have a color, and then then it just has left, right, top, bottom, and, and adds two lines. And, and S2 is just a half size, so it subtracts and adds. So, so oh, no more space. So we give it, we give it a point. We give it this point. Oh, let's we give it this point here, and we give it a size, and then it says, okay. I have one point at left top, so left is left is minus x, and top is plus 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 y. So minus x plus y top left is is going to be here, and then we have left top to right bottom. Who would have guessed? And right bottom is plus x minus minus y, so plus x minus y is here, and then we we add a line. <coughs> so this is the line. Uh, it should go through this dot, but you can, can imagine the same for right top, left bottom, so don't ask why it's doing right top, left bottom, but it doesn't matter, so we get the cross. And then, as you might have guessed, we, we're doing a lot of these little frames. Uh, if you look here, we're doing a lot, a lot, a lot of frames. And yes, a frame is just four lines, but, but still, everything that makes life easier will make life easier. So we give it a center, and we could have given it the top left corner, but as you remember, the UI system is based on center. The renderer is based on center, so everything is based on center point, width, and height. So we use that same pattern here. And yeah, early out. Uh, if we don't have space for four more lines, well, then don't even start. Probably better not to render the frame anyway than render the frame at all than to render half of it. And and yes, this should probably assert and say, at least in debug build, out of debug lines, you can discuss this. And basically, same pattern here, left, right, top, bottom, but the, the lines we add are different. So left top to left bottom. So we gave it a center point, a width and a height, height so left top to left bottom, left bottom to right bottom, Up. Left top to left bottom, left bottom to right bottom, and you might guess right bottom to right top. Something is a bit fishy here. And then right top to left top, so we, we have this frame. And and that's that's the debug renderer. And and as you can see it's not a lot of code. I mean we have some default colors that you can use. <coughs> So you can just use the, the statics here to, to render in a common scene. We have the initialization code. Uh, we have the render code, which is super straightforward. And as I said, this, this render render line with width should probably be in the, in the renderer anyway. And <coughs> still in total, it's just 136 lines of code. Well, this has made development so much easier. And if there's one lesson to be learned here is if a simple tool like th this was five minutes of work plus 10 minutes of testing and 15 minutes of work can save you hours and hours and hours. And I actually want to show you something uh, if I find it. So <laughs> whenever I go into a new office, this this XKCD is the first thing I print and put it up on my wall. Uh, just just Google how long on so how long can you work on making a routine task more efficient before you're spending more time than you save across five years. 
So I spend 15 minutes on it. And 15 minutes, according to this chart, means if I spend 5 seconds on it weekly, I already save time. So, so and, and believe me, debugging stuff like, okay, by accident you sued some typo, we used the coral here instead of the rock. You can't imagine how hard it is to find these bugs at all, or, or things like, um, hey, uh, is this really moving all the way to the left, or is there off by one and be only moving to 90%, so all these boxes and overlay, is the layouting of the, are, are these really connected, is the padding working, and uh, actually let me, let me die real quick here. As you can see, this dialogue is the layout, is the overlap, is the positioning, and now we get the advertising. Thank you. And, and we actually load it. Sorry about that. So, layouting this, just these extra lines saved so much time, and getting getting it to work was so fabulous. And we can see a bit about the layouting system here at work, uh, left column, center column, right column, uh, some padding here, some padding in here, some padding in between. I'm digressing. So, so debug renderer, so, so super valuable. So we've seen how the debug renderer works. Now let's see how, how it is used. So I would say find call hierarchy. We're not adding a single line anywhere. That's interesting. Okay. So let's go to the UI system. So so we have a UI label. And and the UI label actually uses the UI control, render control and the uh, So, I want to go into the render control. Let's let's just do something real quick here. Let's find symbol in workspace. Ah, that's better. No. Okay, brute force. Uh, for some reason, Xcode doesn't really like C++ code. Oh, this is better. So they have the debug renderer and add line is actually only used in our box to the debug renderer. So <coughs> debug render draw polygon. This is a so if you create a debug renderer for box to D, you basically take this interface. Oh this abstract class. Actually, they have a dummy implementation. So you take this class and then just have to implement a few um, few calls. And we only ever use draw polygon here because we have no circles, solid, solid circles, etc. We could implement them. And same here. So let's go into the draw polygon. And and we get. The bunch of vertices, we get get the number of vertices and we get the color. Mm, I've seen that interface before. And then we say, okay, if if this is too much, we just... Uh... So, one more thing. Same pattern here. Render and clear. Don't ask why clear, but, but clear just says, hey, triangle count is zero and, and render just says render all the triangles actually oh we're cheating here so we implemented the box 2d debug renderer debug draw before the debug renderer existed so it's rendering a lot itself but as you could see here the draw polygon is actually no this is a different ad line so forget everything i said about uh, box 2d this is, has a separate implementation. 
and let's check add frame. I'm not rehearsing these. This is all live. This is just follow my thought pattern. And sometimes, especially if a code base is 5, 10, 15 years old, you run into dead ends because things changed or things were different back then. So this looks better. So we have a UI control. And basically, this is a header for UI control. But everything you see on screen that's not game is a UI control, usually buttons, texts, dialogues, textures, um, you get the point. And uh, it's it's a hierarchy-based system, so you add charts, remove charts, and I'm not going too deep into this, but, but basically what happens at the end, once per frame you get the update control call, which is this one here, with a timestamp, and yeah, old school F32, not digressing anymore. We have the render control, <coughs> which basically says, hey, whatever you do, now it's your time to render, and please use this UI renderer. And I'll go into UI renderer versus renderer in the future. Um, it's just an extra mapping layer that does some magic, and it actually contains the renderer. So render control then goes and says, hey, render myself, and, and there's some magic to to render all the children and we look into render debug which is basically the same thing but we just we could just render debug in every render control but for optimization reasons we have a second depth first um, run through the debug control so we can early out at the at the very top of, of the tree so what does render debug do it gets the render state um, which, which is basically, it's a stack of states. So where am I? What colors do I have? Opacity, stuff like that. And we just multiply in our position. So our position, the controls position, the UI controls position is relative to its parent and relative to the parent's animation and relative to the parent's rotation. And so we just push our position on the stack and in this case, it doesn't matter because it's not going further down, but we push it on the stack because our children might need it. And then we just uh, add the frame. At this position, because this is our position and the, yeah, so that's all. And, and, and this is, this is the, this is, so these few lines of code is all the UI I quads. Basically every single one of them. At least we have a default uh, for UI controls. Labels um, do some some special magic. And actually, here is the uh, um, we have an add frame in the in the default renderer. So this is a uh, this is a render control, not the render debug control, and and again uh, historical reasons and also um, text layouting can get a bit dirty. As you can see, we we have some old code here. Uh, some I have no idea what happened here, but well, let's leave this in. Needs a serious cleanup cleanup run, so. We should talk about that at, at some point. Let, let me make a note here. Future. Talk about clean code. Talk about refactoring. And the deeper we dive into fish, the more you see my development as a as a developer, because this code here probably is, is I don't know fifteen years old, and 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 fifteen year ago me was like, yeah, I just get it to work, and I commit uh, commented out code, but it's still there, and yeah, I don't care. And, and today's me is like, oh, please, 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 don't show anybody. That I've done this ever. This this was this was the intern. 
This wasn't me. This I don't know how this slipped through code review. Oh, I should no. So you see where I'm getting at. That's so. So the longer, the older the code is, you see off you've wrote, the more you will realize you didn't know. Sh <clears throat> you didn't know stuff back then. So I would dare to say even the most fantastic child, child gifted child genius developer will realize 20 years later that his code was <clears throat> not so good. And and even if his code at age 20 was better than my code at <clears throat> age, <clears throat> my age, um, if he looks back in 20 years, he will look at his code and go like, what did I do there? So... That's why I like doing games. You work on it for three years, then move on, and all your learnings. I'm rambling, am I? Well, I don't care. Um, so, <coughs> when you're done with a project, and it doesn't matter if it's a one-week project, a one-year project, or a ten-year project, that's the point they evolve as a developer. You learn so much stuff during a project, but 90% in, you cannot apply all your learnings to the old stuff. And if you do, you get inconsistencies and timelines. But but we've all been to the point where we're like, oh, next time I'll do this better. I shouldn't have done this from the start, but next time. And that's how learning comes in. And that's why it, help, why it helps to do lots of tiny side projects and stuff. And enough digression. So committing... Commented out code is a deathly sin. I mean, if you want to store the code somewhere, put it in an extra file that's not, not used. Put it in the documentation. Even commit it once and just just do a commit the next time, even before you... So you commit with your commented out code, fine. You, do an, you don't push. <coughs> you do an extra commit where you just toss it away push that and then your code is in the repository if, if if it's for reference it's good to have this hey no clue what i did here um two exceptions so debug code is fine if it says hey turn this on to debug this rare to find bug or turn this on to debug performance yeah okay probably should be an if dev but but okay and then we had this we called it ping pong code in one of the games we had had one of the features and it was like um we need feature x okay we put it in next game designer next week game designer comes oh i hate feature x turn it off okay so we turn it off so next week turn it on turn it off turn it on turn it off so we had a toggle counter that was like 140 when we released the game and today you would use feature flex a designer can just click in his config file and say hey turn it on or turn it off but we didn't know better so <coughs> debug renderer and and we're not gonna gonna go into the Multi-line text rendering, multi-line text rendering with local localized uh, text in multi languages. Some left to right, some right to left, and and different sizes is 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 a nightmare. So take a careful look at this game. How much text do you see? Ignoring the debug text, it's numbers, <coughs> and there's a reason for that. I didn't want to do localization, so this code is probably use nowhere but in theory uh, the render control the the UI label and label being text can render multi line and and you have to enable that and and then it will do line breaks and stuff and this is basically just just a debug that says hey Give me the frame. <coughs> that was a bad example. So as you can see, um, debug render is super useful. And we probably should have looked into that box 2D debug render more, but super useful. Um, so ignoring the label, this is all the boxes. And when you do layouting and why isn't this working, this is so super valuable. So. The 136 lines for implementing the debug renderer plus this four lines. So 
140 lines of code. I don't want to look back, but probably that was less than 20 minutes of work in total, and I know the hours and hours and hours and more hours of of development time that saved during the the UI layouting and did I mention having having tools also in in app tools is super valuable and always always worth your time I haven't found a single incident incidents where <coughs> excuse me I where this isn't worth the time it always is worth the time Gonna gonna refill my coffee real quick because this cough is back in a mo. That's better. <coughs> That's better. And I realized how much I like this. And now it's on again. I mean, it's, it saves you from hearing a lot of stuff. It's very comfy for me. And the audio quality is better. So I like the look of this screen. I can look at this screen all day long. And and you see the collision boxes here? Oh, nice. Um, debug renderer. Well worth it, but for now... But for, my, for now, probably enough talk about this. Uh, one tiny side note, um, as you've seen, uh, being able to turn this on and off, for example, on device also super, super helpful. Um, in the newer builds in the simulator, you can even press the escape key to, to toggle that, but uh, this, this is an old version of the library, so it's not supported. Um, yeah, let me, so I, I would say we talked about the debug renderer, so let's tick this off. Um, the iPhone Pro 11, iPhone 11 Pro Max, iPhone 11 Pro Max, iPhone 11 Pro Max. I like the Apple products, but sometimes their name are just like, I'm waiting for the iPhone 12 Pro Max Ultra Pro Max Deluxe. Whatever. I'm waiting for my MacBook 16 inch version. So, iPhone 11 Pro Max. And, and <clears throat> this screen is tiny. It's tiny. So, let's see if this even, even. <laughs> The simulator scales, so that should be fine, but it's a lot of pixels. So let's look into this. And, and as you see, I'm transitioning into this, but I'm leaving the debug renderer on because there it is. So this is definitely scaled. This is definitely scaled. Rotate right, because this is in no way the same. So, so you see what what I um. Uh oh. 
Wow. Will this work? So, so you see this? What I talked about, um, the boxes are aligned to the corners. And actually, we draw the outline frame here. And I can see that I, I, the rounded corners I didn't have on my radar, but that actually, um, <coughs> and I'm just seeing a glitch here, which is interesting, and I was kind of worried about, because, as I mentioned, the screen height is 1024, and we have enough overscan for all devices. And, and you just saw there, we have enough overscan for all devices that existed when we did the original game. And, and this, this is really... I actually want to... Let me... I'm going to hit the debug breakpoint here, debug button here, the pause button, when it glitches. Did I hit it? Yeah. So as you can see here, I mean, obviously what happens is uh, I, <laughs> I'm stoked that I can run these two simulators in parallel. This is nice. So this background here is fully tileable. Mm, let me actually here. So content background mm. is it background or background it's probably this one yeah so this background is fully Is this how it works? So obviously it doesn't work in the in the No undo? Okay. So it basically means it repeat that the left corner and the right corner fits so when we scroll screw we just stamp the next one and scroll through. And this is just not big enough. So, I'm, I'm digressing here a bit, but <coughs> what we are doing for the background, and isn't it nice? So, no, 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 next time, wrong screen, danger, next time. We're going to talk about the background keyword 11 Pro Max. I'm not going to type iPhone every single time now. But basically what we do is we have, um, I'm talking about it anyway. So if this is your screen, we, let's make this blue because it's blue, bluish. Um, we have uh, one background here, and then we have a second background here, and then we scroll it to the left. Let's just make this smaller. Let's draw in the screen. So we scroll it to the left. And at some point, if you go even smaller here, sorry, bad layout planning. At some point, the left box will be fully out of the screen. And the right box will be there. And what we do is, at this point exactly, we do what you probably would call a hard scroll. So we scroll we offset by the width of this box. So basically put it like this. So this is this one here. And since they look exactly the same, you won't see it and move this one here. 
No, that that's all fine and good, cause um, yeah, my my drawing here is a little bad. Uh, think about it for yourself. Um, basically, the short version is two two blocks fill the full screen, unless and let's go into here. I I need to quickly. This is better. So this is the official Apple documentation, and <laughs> as you can see, there are all the screen sizes here, up to the iPhone 10, iPhone X. So <coughs> the oldest device we we worked, on, the newest device we worked on was probably the 6s area. And if you scale up, uh, two backgrounds fill the whole screen. No matter what the position, so you have the you have the whole screen, and if you position two boxes smartly, it could be one case. It's the the we just align with the left left corner, so this will be fine. The other extreme case is we align with the right corner, so this will be fine. And so two boxes, if if you position them smartly, will all always fill the screen. So in comes the Pro X Max, and and actually, <coughs> it's not in this document. So hey, Apple, update your docs now. So th this is actually the specs page from the store. <coughs> So if you do some quick math here on these numbers, and that's portrait mode, and we do landscape, so it's it's more than twice as wide as high. So if our background is 1024, the height is 1024, so the height is the same as the width. Yeah, not that that didn't make any sense at all. So let's assume the height is these 1125. So that's our 1024. So if I multiply that by two, I get 2048. And if I remap this here, I get 2250. So what we actually get is is about 80 pixels. 86 pixels of that's nothing. So we need to change our background algorithm to either draw three quads or do some other magic. The the two quads was a ugly hack anyway, because what we should have done is just fill this and have the, the texture coordinates loop and and but as you can see here um, Update, fade in, go to state, render. Um, uh, you you don't even want to know. So this is um, oh actually we're rendering three. Oh as I said, uh, let let's go into the background discussion last time next time. But but it was a good plan to do it like this, especially with with the overscale overscan and. It failed when Apple decided to to bring this ultra wide display. I mean, all the others. It probably also breaks with the X already. Just looking at these, so everything where the the aspect ratio is less than two, so the factor between these two is less than two, just works magically out of the box. So all of the squarish squarish devices. I need to practice this squarish, but. If you get wide, it still works, but if you get past that magic factor of two, it, it breaks, and that's not good. And that doesn't make me happy. I want to quickly re-verify what I just said. Um, oh, 
can I can I start another simulator here? I, I'm going all out now. Can I? Thank you. So this is this. This is this. No, we want them. I I need a bigger screen, but but you get the. And it's getting kind of slow now. <laughs> and there's another one. If if I go offline now, then probably, <clears throat> yeah. The newest iPhone is faster than the newest MacBook, and now I'm simulating three newest three iPhones on a super old MacBook. So guess what? Um, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to close this window. And I'm also going to close this window. Because this, I mean, it worked. It would have worked. It would have taken a long time. I, I don't like how the loading screen is not rotating correctly, but it's still kind of cutish. So let's see. I want to wait for the background to, yeah, same problem. And since we never tested in the last four years, nobody ever realized it. Mm. Which gets me to the point, we do this automated screenshots when we do builds. And we do them on multiple devices. So <coughs> what I think is what would be nice to do. Like a 30 second animated GIF. Just do a screenshot once a second. And then just animate it through, maybe maybe even downscale it a lot, so we we catch this kind of glitches glitches earlier. And I'm actually gonna put this on the to do list later. Um, capture mini animations of. UI test run on all supported devices on major main supported devices. <laughs> Wrong key again, sorry. So I'm running a bit out of time. We're not gonna look into the into the title screen thing today, I guess. I will commit this when when you're gone. Um, no need to to watch me cleaning up the mess I made. I I close this. We go back to the Pro X Max, and and we'll go into the. Release debug with screenshot. Was it this one? <coughs> um, what? <sighs> okay. It stores the device per scheme. Okay, fair enough. It's probably correct behavior, but... So yeah, it it works on the eight, but we wanted to do the eleven Pro Max. And let's close the simulator because
Oh, you wonder why it's rotating after starting the UI test? UI test script actually virtually rotates it, and that doesn't rotate the simulator, but... And that's part of the problem why the screenshots are rotated, because the screenshot script. So, basically, can I... Oh, I cannot do this. Well, and basically, yeah. This shows the same problem. <coughs> but we're going to do the, the other trick. So, step one, because I made some changes I don't want. So, <coughs> background, we can reset the fish app cpp we can reset and the build configuration is five i i changed the ui test to release last time to get get rid of the debug info so git reset hard the background because we don't want to do that yeah sorry It's and then the app CPP, which is basically just um, the debug renderer. And then we want to commit this one, switch screenshot run to release. And that's the Xcode project shared data. Talk about Sublime, because enough command line for the moment. And commit updated to do. And, and I'm going to commit these uh, updated screenshots, fast lane screenshots. <coughs> I want to try and upload, but that's a different story. So the rebase is going to take forever due to the screenshots, uh, which gives me some time to. So. We want to fix the title screen. We need to fix the background. Actually, that should have gone into the to do. I'm gonna gonna add that in a minute because this is a must fix. We 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 cannot release like this. This is this is like people play and in the first three seconds it glitches. Um, it's it's not gonna fly. Sorry. <coughs> and. Um, we're not going to go into the UI system, but uh, get uh, use sublime sublime merge instead of command line, and and you'll see why pretty fast. So so we're done here. We do the push. I I did the fetch earlier, but CI system and stuff. Um, so this is almost good. Uh, I still want to do the background face thingy. I kind of it's, it's a nice little toy thingy, but um, the must fix. Fix background for very wide devices, e.g. iPhone 11 
control max. But this is just a, we, we just need to do this. So <sighs> no release over the weekend. Um, yeah, we, which gives you some time out. You have to tell me that I'm using the, sorry about that. Um, Again, um, I'm so happy that the CI system only triggers after like a minute, so it's not doing two builds for this. It should, shouldn't probably trigger at all for to do, but well, okay. <coughs> so, how do we go on with this? I'll be traveling next week, so I won't plan a stream. Um, okay, multiple things. I want to stream whenever I find the time. I want to work with you on fish. Fish, fish. So I'm not going to do fi fish in un planned streams i'm only gonna do i i only i'm only going to do fish in planned and announced streams so we can do this together um i want to stream in between i'm probably gonna gonna play you saw me fail at hearthstone fail massively at age of empires so just just for me to get in the rhythm equipment check improve the situation and stuff uh, so I'll be back on... where's my calendar? <clears throat> I'll be back here on December 4th. And, and when that, that's a Wednesday, um, I'm, getting, I'm getting my new backbook that day. I can pick it up on the way here. So set up... Uh, I plan to stream fish on Tuesdays and Fridays. So let's aim for Friday the 6th of December. Oh man, that's two weeks. I'll be here in between. I'll I'll play some games. Maybe I even show off one of my other games. So just filler material. But Fish is Friday the 6th at 6.30. And, and I really hope to see you there. Because cause rewriting this background code here is already giving me an ugly ugly headache maybe it's super easy maybe I'm missing missing something here but maybe it's super easy let let's see what happens so I hope you enjoyed today even with the cough and the constant uh, constant coffee drinking and being away for a second um i like doing this i hope i'm getting slightly better the setup here is getting better lighting arrived today is in the mail um, i'm reworking the whole area to be a bit more comfy to do this and then it started out as, out as an experiment and right now i think i'm into 15 hours of this and and i like it I hope this will go on for a long, long time. And, and I don't care if there's one of you watching and learning and having fun with me or if there are 8 million. Uh, it doesn't matter. I do this for me and for the one guy watching. I do it for all of you. I hope you learn some stuff. I do. And yeah, have fun. Stay safe. See you soon.